Over the past decade and a bit, Blumhouse Productions has grown to become the most prolific and successful name in modern horror movies. Founded by Jason Blum, the production company has become known for their small budgets and the enormous profit generated from this, along with a lengthy relationship with Universal. Blum got his start when he helped get financing for Noah Baumbach's directorial debut, Kicking and Screaming. He was able to achieve this when Steve Martin received a copy of the screenplay, and his endorsement helped bring in investors. A few years later, he got a job at Miramax working the acquisitions department. He has described working for the Weinsteins as brutal, and while he was not aware of Harvey Weinstein's real crimes, he said his time there taught him how producers should not behave. An early example of Jason Blum's passion for inventive horror scripts was when he came across the screenplay for the others. He saw so much potential in it, he personally flew down to Spain to meet with the producer who owned the rights and convinced him to let Miramax make it. That movie ended up becoming a critical and commercial hit. Less pleasing was when he failed to acquire the American distribution rights for the German film Run Lola Run, which angered Harvey Weinstein so much they threw a lit cigarette at him, although it thankfully missed. Blum eventually left his position at Miramax to start his own production company, although he's expressed regrets at not leaving sooner. Throughout the 2000s, Blum produced several movies that went largely unnoticed. He did help produce the Dwayne Johnson family comedy The Tooth Fairy for Walden Media and 20th Century Fox, and received an executive producer credit on the Oscar-winning Holocaust drama The Reader. The movie that Jason Blum basically bet his producing career on was a low-budget found-footage horror film titled Paranormal Activity. Filmed in 2006, the filmmakers had been looking for potential buyers when Blum came across the film and was impressed. He then embarked on a quest to help find a potential distributor and was eventually able to get it to Steven Spielberg's attention. It ended up freaking out Spielberg so much that DreamWorks Pictures bought the rights with the intention of producing a bigger budget remake with the original film included as a DVD bonus feature. However, Blum thought the film should receive a theatrical release. After a successful test screening, DreamWorks changed their minds and decided to give Paranormal Activity a proper release. When Paramount and DreamWorks split up, Paramount retained the rights to the film and released it in the autumn of 2009, where it became a big word-of-mouth hit. Even though Jason Blum had a three-year deal with Paramount, they decided not to renew it, much to his shock, although they retained a producer credit on the sequels. Blumhouse continued on as an independent producer looking for the next horror hit. That movie was James Wan's Insidious, which was another micro-budget film that successfully creeped out audiences, became wildly profitable, and launched a franchise that is still going strong. This was followed by Sinister, directed by Scott Derrickson, which also did very well in a small budget. Thus, Blumhouse's trademark became producing horror films with minuscule one to five million dollar budgets and finding a willing distributor that would help them reach a mass audience and watch the profits roll in. Another franchise starter was The Purge, which attracted audiences with its high concept premise and again was only made for three million dollars. Blumhouse would not stick exclusively to horror though. Did you know the company produced a Jason Freeberg, Aaron Seltzer comedy? That was Best Night Ever, a rare non-spoof movie from the duo, although it got terrible reviews and did little at the box office. Blumhouse also helped produce Damon Chazelle's Whiplash, which received a lot of attention at the Sundance Film Festival. It was then acquired by Sony Pictures Classics, performed well during its theatrical run, and won three Oscars, in addition to being nominated for Best Picture, resulting in Jason Blum's first Academy Award nomination. Thus, he now proven himself both a successful horror producer and a respected figure in the film industry. His years of trying to get independent films to interested distributors paid off when he signed a lucrative 10-year first look deal with Universal Pictures in 2014, a partnership that will likely not end anytime soon. He will continue to take a chance on a variety of projects, mostly horror, but other genres too. Ouija, based on the Hasbro toy, had been in development at Universal for a while, and the studio even gave up on the movie a few times. They regained interest when Blumhouse came on board, and while it got terrible reviews, the film was a hit. Something that's nice about Blum is he does take the criticisms to heart. So when the next Ouija movie was released two years later, it got much better reviews. Gem and the Holograms was probably one of the most bizarre films that Blumhouse decided to produce. Based on the 80s animated series, Blum and director John M. Chu had been wanting to make the film for a long time, and eventually went to production with Blumhouse's usual $5 million budget. When the movie was released, it was widely panned by both critics and fans of the show, and did not even come close to making its money back, despite the low budget. It did not help that fans felt betrayed when they entered a contest for them to make videos talking about their love for the Gem animated series, which were then edited into the movie to make it look like they were talking about the live-action version. Let's just say the participants were not pleased. A more positive outcome came with M. Night Shyamalan's The Visit. After the failure of his recent big-budget movies, Shyamalan decided to make something smaller and put his own money into making this found-footage horror film. However, he found no interested distributors. That is, until Blumhouse and Universal agreed to release The Visit, and it did very well, jump-starting a new career direction for Shyamalan, and Blumhouse would help produce his next two films, Split and Glass. A massive hit came with Jordan Peele's feature directing debut, Get Out. 
Blumhouse agreed to finance the film on the condition that, as per the norm, the budget was kept low. Peel did, and the film became an instant word-of-mouth hit, thanks to his social commentary and other elements that immediately entered the zeitgeist. It also earned Jason Blum his second Oscar nomination for Best Picture, and Peel even won Best Original Screenplay, which horror films don't normally win. Get Out was an example of how Blum has a talent for finding directors with interesting visions that they can execute on a $5 million budget. The success of Get Out also led Peel to sign his own first look deal with Universal Pictures. That same year saw the release of the Groundhog Day inspired horror comedy Happy Death Day, which was another success and spawned a sequel. Now, I've mentioned some of the hits Blumhouse has produced, but the company produces a lot of movies, some of which don't make it past a limited release or just head straight to on demand. These are usually released under the BH Tilt label and don't get the big splashy Universal release. Some are forgotten while others manage to build a small cult following. But it's good that Blumhouse rose its dice with a variety of projects and even these smaller releases can become a stepping stone for certain directors. Blumhouse would serve as a producer on Spike Lee's historical drama Black Klansman alongside Jordan Peele. The film was widely acclaimed, pulled in solid numbers at the box office, and Blum would receive his third Oscar nomination for Best Picture. Something his company has sought to do is revive dormant horror franchises, seeing the potential of them exciting a new generation and honoring what came before. When Blumhouse negotiated a deal to produce a new Halloween movie, he made it a requirement that John Carpenter be involved as creative consultant and executive producer. The eventual film, which was directed by David Gordon Green, successfully revived the franchise, and two sequels were immediately put into production, although the follow-ups were more divisive. The budgets for the sequels were also considerably higher than Blumhouse films usually cost, but they nonetheless made a small profit. Blumhouse also produced a new remake of Black Christmas, but it received mostly negative reviews and made little impact at the box office. They would partner with Sony Pictures on a horror film version of the television series Fantasy Island, which was largely disliked, but it managed to make something off its small budget. When Universal's attempt at a cinematic monster universe did not pan out, they decided to discard the idea and just make films inspired by the classic monster movies without any connection with each other. Blumhouse then produced The Invisible Man, directed by Lee Whannell, which put a new spin on the concept. The movie was acclaimed for its handling of the subject matter and its use of scares and was very successful at the box office, the last film of 2020 to pull in strong numbers before the pandemic forced movie theaters to close. Universal very quickly announced plans for a sequel in a spin-off movie, but progress appears to have been slow on that front. They also experienced a bit of controversy over the political satire of The Hunt, with even Donald Trump weighing in as conservatives interpreted the film as being an attack on them, when in actuality it was more mockery of liberals. Universal pulled the movie's original release and then slated it from mid-March 2020, only for everyone to go into lockdown shortly afterwards. Throughout the first year of the pandemic, Blumhouse Productions were primarily released on VOD or streaming, although Universal did release the body swap horror comedy Freaky in theaters. As people slowly became more confident in seeing films on the big screen, horror films are among the types of films that perform the strongest. While most of Blumhouse's output is being released on home platforms, they continue to have major hits in theaters. The Black Phone was a nice-sized hit during the summer of 2022, and the killer doll movie Megan did particularly well, even spawning a viral dance craze. When development of a Five Nights at Freddy's movie at Warner Brothers did not lead anywhere, and the studio put it in turnaround, Blumhouse immediately swooped in to buy the rights to the video game adaptation. Working closely with creator Scott Cawthorn, the film took a while to get off the ground, but Blum was patient, and when the movie was finally released, it was a huge hit with the fan base. Five Nights at Freddy's has become Blumhouse's highest grossing film to date, giving them and Universal yet another horror franchise. Jason Blum would take his biggest risk yet when he decided to produce a new movie in the Exorcist franchise. Universal and Blumhouse paid $400 million to Morgan Creek Productions for the rights to make those movies, with the agreement that they would produce a trilogy. David Gordon Green directed the first of these titled The Excess Believer, which was widely panned by critics. The film itself cost $30 million, which is higher than usual for a Blumhouse movie, and while it performed okay at the box office, they likely expected a lot more. Green will not be directing the next Exorcist movie, but I'm sure there are a lot of discussions behind the scenes to avoid a similar reception to that one. Meanwhile, there are other horror franchises Jason Blum has expressed interest in reviving. He has mentioned wanting to bring back Friday the 13th, as well as A Nightmare on Elm Street. And much like he was able to bring back Jamie Lee Curtis for Halloween and Ellen Burstyn for The Exorcist, Blum has said that if he got the rights to Elm Street, he would attempt to persuade Robert Englund to reprise his role as Freddy Krueger. Last month, Blumhouse and James Wan's Atomic Monster announced they would merge, bringing two major horror producers together. Megan and Night Swim among the films they've collaborated on, and both have a penchant for high-concept horror films, so this partnership makes sense. This allows Atomic Monster to benefit from the same first-look deal with Universal, although the two labels will continue to develop their own individual projects. As for what Blumhouse is coming up, the company is behind the new horror movie Imaginary. Lee Whannell is currently directing another movie inspired by Universal Monster, The Wolfman, and there are sequels to The Black Phone and Megan in the Works. 
Blumhouse is also involved in Richard Licklander's musical Merrily We Roll Along, which will have a 20-year filming schedule. It's currently on year 5, so I'm going to have to wait a little while longer to see it. One film I'm disappointed to knock it off the ground was Spooky Jack, an animated movie set in a haunted house that would have been a collaboration between Blumhouse and DreamWorks Animation. It was originally announced in 2017, but it was removed from Universal's release schedule a few years later, and there have been no updates since then. Throughout his career, Jason Blum has certainly proven himself a producer with an eye for picking up exciting horror films and launching major franchises, while also giving other genres a try from time to time. Even when a Blumhouse project does not hit, there's always one right around the corner that does, and it's impressive what their productions do with the budgets they wield. See you next time.